attempt to do something so great that it's doomed to failure unless God is in it. I feel your heart's always in it. You give me peace in the morning. You come through like a cool breeze on a summer day. And there's no need to worry. The odds say we win. You know that I love you. There's no one above you. I love you. Yeah. What a powerful quote by John Haggai, who went on to be with the Lord just yesterday at the age of 96. Uh, I didn't know much about this man. I didn't know anything about this man, frankly, uh, before I found out about his passing. But what a powerful, powerful uh, a life or light in the kingdom of God. He was uh, famous for training up evangelists to, to go out and to spread the gospel in their own communities, in their own uh, cities and countries. Um, this was a shift from the way we viewed uh, missionary work. Uh, in the West, we think of missionary work as being something done uh, by someone who goes off to a far, far away country and it's really adventurous and, and really intriguing and exciting. But uh, Haggai was, was instrumental in causing a shift in the way we thought about missions. And so this quote, this quote about attempting something great for God, something so great that if God doesn't show up, it's doomed to failure. What a powerful, powerful, powerful concept. I mean, when we go about doing ministry today, is this the way we approach it? So much of what we see in the mega church world that we live in, it, it is doable by just having a great audio visual team, uh, equipment, sound, lighting. Uh, you have a good looking pastor dressed in, in nice clothes <laughs> saying something super inspirational. Um, and, you know, and, and there's church. But none of this is not something that, can be that cannot be duplicated over and over and over again with people who don't have a relationship with God, who don't have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. And that's not what we need today. We need a move of God. We need to see something transpire, something take place that takes God's doing. That's the only way we're going to separate ourselves. That's the only way the church is going to regain relevance. And Haggai knew this. You see in his ministry and his life, and, and let's just take a look at the article. It says that he founded, a, a, he founded a, an institute for advanced leadership. Uh, it moved it to Singapore and trained more than 120,000 evangelists from non-Western countries, including 1,200 from Indonesia, 400 from the Philippines, 500 from India, 400 from Nigeria, 380 from Brazil. I mean, and it goes on from there. Uh, I was watching an interview with him, uh, a recent interview, where he talked about uh, the importance of training leaders and training up people to go and do the work uh, of the gospel, of preaching the gospel, of spreading the gospel. It was he was saying that one person can do a lot, yes, but if that one person becomes a thousand, is if he becomes ten thousand people, that is, if you train up other people to do the work of sharing the gospel, think of the exponential growth of the gospel being spread, right? If we begin to think more in terms of each individual being someone who can share the gospel with their neighbor, think of how quickly we could complete the Great Commission. That commission, that, that mission that God gave us, that Jesus gave us to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And so this man was focused on a very, he, this man would live his life very, very focused on the mission. Nowadays, or especially most, most recently, the big thing has been the election. And Biden has been proclaimed the winner by many news outlets, and Trump is challenging that. Um, he's saying that there's some evidence of voter fraud. And the church has been thrusted into this whole uh, back and forth between the two camps. And the church, um, in, in many uh, instances, are siding with Trump. Some people are siding with Biden. and and. And to be honest, 
I think it's all a major distraction from what we should be doing, and that is to preach the gospel. I'm reminded of the angel that met with Joshua, and Joshua was saying, whose side are you on? Are you for us or our enemies? And the angel was saying, no, for neither. I come representing God. I come representing the armies of the living God. And that's who we are. We don't belong to a political party. And I understand that, that there's a lot of people who, who believe that the conservative Republican Party represent a lot of what uh, the Bible says we should stand for. And, and, I, and I hear you on that. And a lot of people who say that the left is steeped in things that are anti-God, anti-Christ. And I see those things as well. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Jesus did not call us to be representatives of the Democrats or the Republicans. He's called us to represent him. And we can't lose sight of that. I'm so encouraged by the life of Haggai and how focused he was on that mission. And it showed me how when a person is laser focused on doing the will of God, on finishing the Great Commission, God will take a person like that and he will perform miracles, he will open doors, he will make ways where there seems to be no way. And when you attempt something that is so great that it requires him to move, he will move. The Bible says that we pray and we don't get answers because we pray amiss. We pray things that are not in the will of God. But the Bible also says that if we pray according to the will of God, then God hears us and we have what we ask. A lot of times the problem that we have is that we're praying for and focused on things that have nothing to do with God's end time agenda, which is to get the gospel out to those people who have not heard it or to the people who may have heard the gospel, but they have not seen evidences of the gospel actively working in people's lives. God is a wonderful, awesome God. And we see in 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter and the 9th verse, that God is steadily looking throughout the earth for those whose hearts are perfect towards Him, that He may show Himself mighty on their behalf, that He should show His powers and His wonders on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards Him. Think about it, folks. God's heart is for people to be saved. God's heart is so that people will be delivered from the world of sin and the bondage of sin. And if there becomes a man, if there would be a people, a generation that would rise up to go ahead and preach the gospel and connect people back to the Father, to cause people to be reconciled to Him by preaching the gospel message that He's commissioned us to preach, what thing would God withhold from that type of person? What thing won't God do to make sure his end time agenda is accomplished? Oh, my friends today, I hope that you're encouraged by this message. Go out there, preach the gospel. Have a vision beyond yourself. Go out there and, and, and win the lost. Look at the neighborhood you're living in. Look at the block you're living on. Look at, the, look at the street you're living on. What if that whole block was worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth? What if that whole block came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? That might be something that, that goes way beyond what you could even think or imagine. But folks, don't you get it? That's exactly what God is calling us to do. That's exactly who God is calling us to be. A people who know their God who will do exploits in the name of Jesus Christ. But you gotta have a vision. You gotta have a vision bigger than yourself. Go out there guys and have a good one. God bless you. Go out there guys and win the laws for Jesus Christ. He is soon to come. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.